welcome to Third Eye Champagne. I'm Kirsten Langston, author and intuitive. We are continuing what has organically evolved into a healing series. So I have another practitioner with me today. This is Lisa Hagenbuck Bach, but I did, I just did it. I already did it. I already just ruined the name. Hagenbach. Hagenbach. Sure. Okay. <laughs> this is Lisa Hagenbach and she does something I've never heard of. Well, I heard of it, but I wasn't sure how it worked. Um, it is called, am I going to get this right? Family Constellations, right? Yes. And it's, I'm going to let her explain exactly what it is, but um, let me say hi to Lisa first. Hello, Lisa. How are hi, you? Hi, Kirsten. I'm great. I'm so grateful for this opportunity. So yes. thank you so much. Yeah. So I had a reading, mm -hmm. Lisa, um, and it was really weird. Okay. So I'm going to give you my experience and then we're going to let Lisa explain exactly what's going on here. But essentially you kind of say, okay, here's, here's a list of things. This is my experience. Here's a list of things. Like here's, you know, what we need to work on, blah, blah, blah. Mine was money. And you send her your family's charts. Mm -hmm. So you send the astrological information of the immediate family. And then when you get in the session, you print out a clock, which I totally <laughs> forgot to print out. So I drew this really ugly clock that you'll see in the pictures. <laughs> and, and then you need representatives for certain things. So it's not just your family members. There are other things that need to be represented on this clock. And the, the, basically the goal is to clear out a bunch of crap for, for lack of a better term. That's a spiritual term, everybody. Um, <laughs> but you, you're, you're clearing out this stuff so you can move forward and, you know, on your particular subject, which typically, you know, it's coming down through the family lineage lineage. And I've always said this, I, I, you know, when I do my own clearing work, I always say we're clearing, we have to clear the ancestral energies. You have to clear the family energies and you, you inherit so much, you know, between the years of like zero and five, basically, you were like the biggest sponge in the world. So if you have, oh, let's say, for example, a grandmother, Grammy, who grew up in the Great Depression, and she's reusing friggin' tinfoil, that sinks into your little six-year-old brain, like, oh boy, we're poor. And then, you know, <laughs> you become a 45-year-old grown-up, and you're like, it's weird, I can't really breach like this income threshold, and I don't know why. Well, there was groundwork laid there. So what right. family constellations does in my personal experience is it 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 clears all that energy out and moves it out but it does it in a really material world tactile kind of a way and I think mm -hmm. that the way that it's done really helps it sink into your head do you know what I mean because yeah. when you you'll see the pictures I, I'm probably showing them to you right now but you'll see I have these little figurines moving around this clock and it's because you're you're moving everything around and you're you're really in it and you're going you see it visually you're involved in it so mm -hmm. it, it it hits different than mm -hmm. other ways of clearing or healing because most ways are very ethereal and weird and you're kind of you know usually you get pulled into a meditation or something and you know somebody's doing energy work that's that's a lot of what you know, clearing is this for me was way more tactile, way more involved, way more mental, way more cerebral, way more psychological, and much more. Um, how do I want to say it? I want to say I don't want to say less spiritual because that's not what it was, but it was. It's very real life. That's what it is. It's not mm -hmm. this mystical kind of thing that's happening. It's kind of like you're working things out in your brain. It feels mm -hmm. to me far more psychological than it does anything else. So yeah. with that, with my very long and involved intro, because I'm feeling particularly talkative today, <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to hand it over to Lisa. Lisa, can okay. you please explain to us what Family Constellations is, what it does, give us the lowdown. Okay. You know, when you said it's weird, it is. It's weird and there's magic in it. And it's probably the most fascinating modality I've ever found. And I thought that was astrology, but then I, then I found this. So essentially what family constellation work is, is that it's an energetic healing modality that provides sh positive shifting resolution on unresolved family intergenerational issues that um that still reverberate in the family line mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. passed down to descendants and then they're feeling kind of the the negative effects of that in the present moment because when you know grandma irene didn't completely fix an issue in her lifetime and she dies it doesn't end with her that energy you know we're all individuals part of a family system and that family system is always looking for wholeness it's always looking to be put in the correct order so that the flow of life and love can can flow naturally and just like just be naturally but that's not really the way it works in reality <laughs> so there are disruptions to the orders and the flow of love that cause disturbances that create these issues and when grandma irene doesn't clear it then you know granddaughter sarah is like oh i'll pick up unconsciously i'm going to pick up the baton and i'm going to take this on and i'm going to clear it and i'm going to make my family whole well it didn't start with sarah it doesn't belong to sarah and what what's recently come to me it's kind of like empaths who pick up other people's energy and then they're trying to process it but it's not theirs mm -hmm. so then it can go haywire and then you're kind of left holding this energetic bag of like it works really, really well on these, um, and they're, they're issues that you would take to um, other forms of healing, you know, whether it be trauma work or psych psychology, all of that. But it's it you, you, you take those issues to it, but you kind of look at what's underneath. You have to see your relationship to it. And then actually through calling on ancestral support, which is always there for us to call on, um, we can make these positive shifts and put it back in order and that we get it in order on the clock, <laughs> for example. We get the representatives where they need to be in the moment. And then everything just kind of settles and you just feel like, I always say, it's kind of like I'm getting on a ride with somebody and we're not going to stop until that car has made a complete stop at the station because we mm -hmm. can't leave it in a, you know, and for, for somebody like you can clear a lot, you know, we were, we were clearing a lot. We were working on it for a while, uh, but you can kind of have to stay until you get you get the representative the energetic representatives in enough of an order you take them out of their roles and then you just wait and then things start to when it's it's the thought is that if when it's in correct energetic order um and you know in this moment then the shifting can occur can you talk to us a little bit about how this modality came to be, who yes. came up with it, who invented it? How do you get involved in it? How did you find it? That's, I'm yes. sorry, I bombarded you with like 40 questions, but no, that's cool. Um, so Bert Hellinger is kind of the, the father of this work and he developed it like in the nineties. So interestingly enough, he's German. He kind of came of age at World War II um, and he was he was a psychoanalyst, among other things. He was a Jesuit priest. But the genesis for this work came from his 16 years that he spent with the Zulu, with the Zulu tribe community, mm. immersed in there in a missionary role. But he noticed that there were these orders of love. And when the orders of love were adhered to and they flowed well, the whole family system worked well mm. and so he then developed this it's interesting they call it family constellations I thought it really I mean a friend of mine told me about it years ago and I thought well that must have something to do with this astrology I'm an astrologer this could be really cool right, you know right right yeah and then um so but but the constellation piece just to kind of go back to that before I kind of talk about how I tagged into it essentially um and maybe it would be helpful to, to kind of describe what a, what because I do individual client sessions now this work can be done in group settings um and that's how I was initially mm. dr drawn to it so I had heard of this I found you know there was a course at, you know at a local um 
Infinity Foundation in Chicago. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm going to sign up for it. And I'm like, well, I'm going to email, you know, the teacher and say, you know, I'd like to combine this with astrology. What do you think? Well, he calls me 10 minutes later and we have like a, a half hour conversation about it. Mm. And he's like, you know, I don't know if you can tag it in to this because uh, he's an energy worker. Um, uh, so he didn't know anything about that. But he said, you know, I do these workshops in Chicago and they're all day. Why don't you come down just, ex- you know, experience it? Well, I went to one and I, it was like an eight hour workshop. It felt like 20 minutes went by. I was just fascinated by all of it and how it worked. So there is group settings where you use people as energetic representative representatives. And um, of course he's the facilitator and a client comes up with an issue and they set up this constellation of how the people are relating to each other. And then we bring mm-hmm. the, he brings in other things. So um, in an individual session, um, and I got the clock from him, you know, he's like, that's what he does in individual sessions. So I always say, you know, print out the clock, grab 20, rep- 20, 20 small objects. And initially there's this conversation about, we're going to work on one issue today. What is that issue for you? And then I ask a series of questions, not to be nosy, but just to say, okay, let's look at the family system and who else in the family system has this issue. And how does that, and that kind of leads the way for me to go, okay, this is how I'm going to set up the constellation. So um, I should first say I set up my office with, you know, the elements and my ancestors, the client's ancestors, you know, I've got all this, I'm coming in with an army of ancestral and energetic support. So you bring in the objects as representatives for people, for concepts, um, and we're essentially what we're doing is I want to know where they are on the clock and I want to know where they're looking. What are they looking mm-hmm. at? That's really interesting. So I'm going to show you guys what I use because it's just a little bit ridiculous, but I collect Disney kids. <laughs> that was that's right. Okay. Uh, I collect these little guys. I also have the Hanna Barbera set, by the way, but I think I used all Disney when I was with you. Oh, it was so, so perfect. I have, so I'm using these little, that's that's a Hanna-Barbera. So I'm using these little figurines though. Okay, so oh, it's more Hanna-Barbera. So I've got like 20 of these little guys and I'm moving around the clock. So what's really interesting, oh, you know what I also have? This is not going to turn into a Disney kin um, video, I promise. <laughs> But I also have a uh, mother. Goose, everybody randomly. everybody wants this though, Kirsten. They're going to ask for Barbies too. So I know. Look, I got all the mother goose. I got Humpty Dumpty. I got everything. So anyway, look, here's Fred Flintstone. Essentially, you get all your pieces on the clock and you, um, Lisa will ask you, okay, where does so-and-so want to be? You know, who do we need on the clock? Okay, we need this, we need this, we need this. And, oh, we need this, this figuring, but I don't know what it represents yet. Okay, where does that want to be? And then she'll say, okay, where, are the, where is that looking? Oh, it's looking at 12. Okay, well, where is this? Okay, it's looking at two. So you have everybody kind of scattered. This is the way it worked with me anyway. Everybody's sort of scattered on the clock. Now, what's really interesting, she will just say, okay, um, what is this object that, you know, you don't know what it is yet, you know, and you just first thing that comes to your head. So what's with me, I was on the board. I had my mom, my dad, I had a couple other people on there. And then this thing was sitting there and it was staring at my mom. It was Jiminy Cricket. I remember very clearly. <laughs> my mother was the blue fairy. So. <laughs> oh, it's staring at my mom and I, but I don't know what it is. So we're, so this is how it works, right? You have this thing and it's, mm-hmm. and so eventually it comes out and it's just off the top of your head. Okay. What does your mom want to do now? Oh, she wants to turn this way. Okay. Turn her this way. Mm-hmm. And as you start moving these little figures around, a story becomes clear. Mm-hmm. And this is the story of what needs to be cleared. And sometimes even how it got there, what, what it's doing there. Mm-hmm. So with me, I have Jiminy Cricket and I, I, we don't quite know what it is yet. And it's, but it's staring at the figure of my mom. It's staring at the blue fairy and my mom has her back to it. Mm-hmm. And my mom is nowhere near me on this clock. She's way, way far away from me, but I'm sort of triangulated between Jiminy Cricket and my mom. I was Snow White, by the way. So <laughs> just let everybody know. This is like, <laughs> uh, but eventually it comes out that Jiminy Cricket is a vortex and it's a vortex that's 
chasing my mother around, chased my mother around this clock. I'm not joking with you guys. No. So it, it's, it's not that. that you have to be psychic. And it's not that Lisa says, make Jiminy Cricket chase, you know, no, no. She just says, what does it want to do now? Um, it wants yeah. to follow my mom. Okay. Mm -hmm. What does your mom want to do? She wants to run away. Okay. So you start moving these things around. The story becomes clear. I am not kidding you guys. This money vortex. Never in my life has Jiminy Cricket felt so menacing. Okay. I, I mean, it, it really, yeah. to me, as I'm watching it happen, I'm going, it keeps chasing her around. This thing chased my mom around the clock for, I don't know, probably a good half hour. I mean, it was. Yes. Okay, so she is in the middle of the clock next to the three facing the five. Where does Third Eye Champagne want to be? It wants to be right next to me. The fact that I picked Goofy with the one arm extended to the five, like, eh, yeah, like it's right. it's significant. Exactly. Um, like, so I'm, I'm pointing something out to you. Is yeah. What so I've got I've got one of the three Caballeros here, um, shooting his guns. All right, and he is on the five, and he is looking directly at me. Okay. But I don't know what it is yet. But it feels okay. it feels like chaos. It feels like I mean this guy's shooting his guns. Like, oh, 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 like he's shooting his guns. And Pinocchio wants to be everybody's crowded over here. So Pinocchio is also so now this is interesting. The body is facing number five, but because his head is turned to the side, his head is actually facing me and Goofy. Like, let's tune into the energy of how you feel and how the website feels when TC's energy comes in and when her motives come in. Whoa, they want, they want to move off the clock. And then the object at five, when TC and the motive come in. Moves closer that? to the website. Closer to the website. Closer to the website. And it's like, and now it's zeroed in on the website. It's very much zeroed in on the website. I feel like it's not me anymore. It's this website. I feel like jealousy wants to come in. Yeah. Let's, let's pick out a representative for jealousy. All right. I'm Fred Flintstone. Excited. Not a Disney, but uh, I also have Hanna-Barbera. <laughs> Jealousy wants to come in, and that is also right next to the website. So it's on, it's on the three, but it's it's crowded into the website. So now, just kind of in your mind's eye, we're gonna start calling in our ancestors, in your ancestors. I've already called in both of our ancestors to do the work, but we're gonna start more intentionally calling in your ancestors. What I mean by that is, it's somebody like an Archangel Michael, somebody from like, somebody who's never been in, in human form mm -hmm, and they mm -hmm, just come in mm -hmm. to support. And I wanna put that behind you. Tinkerbell. Okay, perfect. The chaos, the caballero with the guns, he wants to move closer to the male support and much closer to the website. So he's like super crowding everything out. This is so creepy. Okay, this is creeping me out. It's also also trying to call in more things. Mm -hmm. Like it wants more things behind it. Like it wants more, I don't know, gremlins or weird energy or what it wants. It's trying to call in more crappy things. If you tune it just to the energy of website, how's, how does that feel? <laughs> Feels pretty good. <laughs> to be honest, it's kind of like I'm looking at Goofy's little face. So now what I would like you to do is, and I want to call in behind you and we can just, we have the non-systemic support, but I want to call in your energetic team, like your guides, your angels specifically, like who works, the, the energy that works with you. Mm -hmm. And so. chaos actually is facing more me than the website now it wants to turn. Okay, then let's put the boundary between you okay. and chaos. Okay, it's going to be... Like, it's gonna be you and oh my God! Did it fall by itself? Uh-huh. She wants to move closer to the chaos. So now she's right behind it. Website wants to move. The website wants to move. Can I move it? Yeah. Where does it want to move? It wants to go to the six. The jealousy, the ego goes with it. So now TC is really, really close to my guidance team. Dude, she is like, this is like basketball. She's like crowding everything out. Like this is mm -hmm. ridiculous. All right. Archangel Michael, mm -hmm. AKA Thumper, mm -hmm. right? 
there. Right in between where she's headed toward your team. Mm -hmm. Like his sword of truth is just kind of like, and I want to see how she reacts to that. They want to move. They want to move very slightly. Like they don't want to, but they're going to. So mm -hmm. TC and her little coterie of assholes mm -hmm. are, they're moving a little bit off the clock. Okay. We want to move again. I think we want to move again. I think we're going to move. We're all, Okay, so I am going with creativity over to the 10. Okay. Non-systemic support coming with me. Website. Damn, the website's still too close to TC, though. Mm -hmm. Website is turning to face the 10. Okay. But it's not with me, and I feel like it should be closer to me. And what way are you look facing? Are you facing the website and the website facing you? Yes. Okay. Is the website resistant to moving, just standing next to you to see how it, what that energy feels like? Oh my God, it's tied to her. Oh my God, it's it feels like it can't move. Oh my God, that just hit. It's tied to TC. It is tied somewhere. Let's take Archangel Michael and mm -hmm. move him by you. Okay. On the other side, I have like, I have... Snow White on one side mm -hmm. of you, and then mm -hmm. I have Archangel Michael on the other side of you. Okay. And all of you turn and face TC. Okay. And you say to TC, with the aid of the sword of Archangel Michael, we sever your connection. Oh, website wants to move again. All right. Yes. Oh my God, Lisa. It's so funny because the, the divine energy, feminine energy ended up being Doc from the Seven Dwarves. Um, but he's escorting, he's escorting her out, everything out. Oh God, there it goes. Shit, there it goes. Everything out, off the board. Everything out, everything out, everything out, everything out. So as we work through this and now she's she's bringing in ancestors, she's clearing things, she's asking questions, the love and support came closer and the money vortex moved further away. And it was really interesting. It was really interesting. So you're really working with a lot of your subconscious is basically what's going on. But what happened right. is my mom calls me maybe, I don't know, probably a week later. And she says, you're not going to believe this. I just won a bunch of money at the casino. It's a really profound way of doing things. And it's so tactile and it's so hands-on. And that's what I really love about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember you saying that you couldn't tune into your energy, but you could tune into your representative's energy. We as descendants, we, we want to belong and we want to we want the system to be whole. And so we sometimes will alter the flow of love and go, I'm going to come in and I'm unconsciously going to try to do this. And the thing about this work is that we, we have this vortex, but the vortex doesn't just stay in this one little area. It permeates in our life. And so the vortex could have, could be part of the website situation. Mm, and I think it might, you know, it, we got it to, to go, so let's look at, it's a really interesting that when you go back and revisit a situation, because the, the energy will move from, from okay. there. So I'll give you an example. I had a client who um, a lot of times too, I'll set up a representative for the, a person's inner child. Mm -hmm. because that's where we hold and that's the psychological piece too right it's like a, that's where we hold a lot of this energy and we just want to get positive shifting on that we ultimately you know I know what I'm looking for in terms of the movement so she didn't have a lot of safety in her childhood um was trying to I was working trying to get that inner child it was moving but ultimately it glommed on to her grandmother who raised her oh wow and I even said, so I, I, you know, facilitators do this work a little differently. I always like it to be very much what the client is able to shift because I don't really want to put my thoughts of where I want everything to be on it. And that right. doesn't feel right to me. So I just said, I asked, I said, you know, is it possible that you could move your inner child closer to you? And she was like, no. I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. all right, she can't do it. We left it. We got we got some movement. You, you want to get some movement. 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the next time we meet kind of shortly after that, I'm thinking, okay, we're going to set this up and we're going to ask where the inner child goes. It's going to go by her grandmother. I'll be damned if she didn't place it right next to her. Wow. (laughs) And I went, awesome. Well, we don't need movement on that anymore. Let's work on something else. Yeah. You know, so this shifting occurs in the integration and processing and then things just show up differently and it's interesting because I expected her to go wow that's weird and she didn't she was like oh it goes here so when you were doing mine I so I gave you the chart of my immediate family yeah. um so every member which I happen to have of course yeah <laughs> of course I have this information I have all the birth right. signs right, um, right, but right. you you said so you used the charts you looked at the charts and you said I can see the mm-hmm. money patterns in all of these charts like you could see it in the astrology before we even sat down for the constellation work yeah and that's the piece for me that's my entree into a client's energy field is through astrology so I've been doing it long enough that I start to hear numbers and situations like in in terms of the characteristics of planet signs you know houses and so uh I really like to get the it's, it's great when I have the client's chart, but it's also really great if I have extended family because we all have a money house. We all have mm-hmm. Venus, right? We all have Taurus. We all have like the energies connected to money. And sometimes we can see patterns related to it. And when you see enough of the patterning, you can say, oh, I, I kind of get this. And I can And then if we, when we tune into individual players, like in your mom's chart, how does she relate to money? Because she's on the board. And then how does Kirsten relate to money? And, you know, and so I tune in to the energy fields. Um, And part of this work too is calling on not only our ancestors, but uh, not, we call it non-systemic support. It's like support that's not in human form. So it could be Mm -hmm. Archangel Michael or Raphael, or sometimes I have to bring in source because like ancestors won't take the stuff, you know? Wow. And, uh, but oftentimes related to the situation, I'll bring in the planetary energy and because the ancestors are called in and I think they're always, they're looking for us to do better than they did. They're looking for, to love and support us. There's all these issues go back and we all have them in our systems. We all have common issues in the system and that's why not only when you know as I as a facilitator get some healing from it representatives get healing from it in a group session because we're all kind of you know we're working to clear your issue we're all interconnected but and I really feel you know there's a lot of applications for this type of work and one of the ones that I have a real fascination with and would love to figure out how to do is I really feel like you could use it in a paranormal investigation. Oh, yes. That would be so interesting. Right? I'll actually do a short meditation where the client calls in the ancestors mm-hmm. and yep. going way back. And then there's, and then they got this from my teacher too. Like there's a box in front of you and there's the root cause for that because we just want to go back to the core of it right yeah you want to get it to the at the core what is the core can somebody take this back because so that Kirsten doesn't have to deal with this right now and they're like and, and that's the thing right in the meditation because this has happened to me too where I see it and it's like oh I'll be damned if somebody isn't coming up and taking this box yeah. and they do various things with it and then what happens is because we can have all these energies on the clock and they're all different places and it gets to a point where okay nobody's wanting to move and so, okay, well, we got to clear the core of it. It's beautiful too, because you sit in how you feel all of that energetic support from the ancestors and they take this away from you and they, you ask for their, you know, you have a shared fate, but you can have a different destiny and you ask for their blessing to live your destiny mm-hmm. and they give it to you. And then the client comes out and they're like, that's really cool. And then I'm like, okay, let's tune into the clock and I'll be damned if everything doesn't start moving back into the order it needed to be in. There's a lot of action placed on the client. And I think that is one of the reasons that it works as well as it does because you are involved in it. Yes, it's Mm co-creative. And you're invested in your healing. 
and yeah. you're taking agency over your life and you're like I got this and when I don't have it it's also a great way to go oh I can just I can just call my ancestors mm -hmm. you know and they can help me and my teacher once did an exercise where he just wrote down like mother father issue um blockage you know different things and you stand on them and you just mm -hmm. okay and tune into the end what is it and you just get so much information and you're it's bringing this you're right it's like bringing the subconscious to your conscious awareness and then you know what to do with it yeah and sometimes it's, it's consenting to what the reality was and maybe the reality sucked and you couldn't change it but you consent to it and you say okay I can go forward and do it different a lot of these issues are unresolved trauma yeah and we can then experience trauma in our life and when we're in trauma we're kind of in a victim perpetrator entanglement yes so consenting to what it was what it was reality and saying the statement of to your perpetrator you know this happened and i leave you the fate i leave your fate with you mm -hmm. and i am taking my destiny back and because I am just consenting to the reality of what happened, not because I wanted it, not because I caused it, but just because this is a fact. Mm -hmm. And it takes, you know, it takes forgiveness off the plate. There's no forgiveness for it, right? But you can just say, look, this is reality, but I don't know, you have your fate, go on your merry way. I'm taking my destiny back. And it's really empowering. So how can people find you? Uh, my website is futureecho.org. So F U T U R E E C H O.org. Um, I'll put all this information yeah. where you guys yeah. can find it. I'm going to have all the information for you guys so you can contact Lisa. Uh, as you know, I don't recommend people I don't believe in and I don't recommend modalities that don't work for me. So when I recommend Lisa, it's because I know she's good, I know it works, I've experienced mm -hmm. it myself. So I don't want you guys to think that, you know, I'm just picking up people off the street here. I have nothing more to ask. I'm, I'm all, I'm all done up. I'm all wrung out. Do you have anything more you need to add? I'm just so honored. I, I just really appreciate it. Um, I guess I just would add, you know, just remember, call on your ancestors. They really, really want to give you love and support. And we forget to do that, I think. We think of these archangels and we think of these other things to call on and, you know, but there's so much just love and support in your family line and it's always there for you. I love that. Mm -hmm. Love that. Well, on that note, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to end the show. Thank you so much, Thank Lisa, you. for being here. Thank I appreciate you. your time. I appreciate your effort. Thank you guys for watching. Um, if you want to book with Lisa, all the information will be in this general vicinity so you know check wherever you are check the box check the bio check check whatever you need to check information will be there i do love you i do adore you i am your biggest cheerleader be well